Hello fellow YouTubers, this is uh, Ross Goslin here working on my M113 US Armored Personnel Carrier. I've been building this for some time now and um, just want to talk a, briefly a little bit about the experience. Um, well, let's start off with the interior. That's where it all began. I hope you can see this in the camera. Um, this was a, a real experience with the paint um, white. White is not a, a, a great color to work with from what I've read on um, the internet. Um, it's a really hard paint to work with with airbrushes and other things. And um, This is my second coat of uh, white. The first time I used it, it, um, it ran. I ran a lot and I probably, most of it was my fault. I need to know my my colors a little bit more. Uh, I probably put too much thinner and um, not enough pressure on the airbrush. So it ran and um, that's okay because I did a little bit more research online and um, found a way to uh, strip it. And uh, I found an uh, easy off oven cleaner. Uh, works really, really well. Um, I would re re um, ask anyone if you want to go restripping use easy off um, very nice just make sure you have ventilation if you don't have the, uh, the strong vapor version uh, the second coat went on really really well I used uh, Tamiya flat white and um, it was okay I'm much happier with the results and that was pretty much the white um, yeah there it is um, and there's a lot of white inside there so I went through my spares box and got a bunch of uh, you know, odds and ends, some ammo cans from various kits and made some tarps with aluminum foil and pepper tissue and there's a nice wood box, I don't know if you can really see it too well but I'm pretty impressed with that, I really got the wood grain just where I wanted it and so it kind of breaks up that white inside uh, all the hatches inside the model will be open uh, so I can show people the inside um, and that was really nice uh, one thing I did notice about the kit is um, I am going to be having this hatch I don't know if you can see it I want to leave it opened um, just like this However, the one problem I noticed is that the antenna, there's another antenna attachment right right here by the rim of the hatch, and that unfortunately will prevent me from getting the second antenna, which uh, is on there. I mean, I suppose I could have chopped it off and moved it someplace else, but I'm really not that uh, ambitious to do that. Um, I do have a lot of kits I want to get working on and this one's just going to have to just move on down the line of many kits to follow. Uh, what else can I talk about? Um, you know, the tracks. Um, well, what I did here was the idler wheels uh, Tamiya is very uh, notorious. A lot of their early kits, their tracks are uh, extremely tight when they're put on and it puts a lot of pressure on the drive sprocket and also the idler wheels and what happens is you end up getting a nice, uh, I don't know if it's convex or concave, but ends up with a nice scoop because the tracks are so tight and also the paint because it is stretched very tightly uh, will begin to chip with a lot of uh, manhandling. So to prevent that, I used a brass rod and I um, cut off the attachment point and drilled in a hole maybe two, three centimeters forward so that now the tracks have a lot of give. Uh, there's not a lot of force being applied at all. There's no pressure. So painting it and applying it is going to be a, a snap and all I have to do now is um, I'll just glue down these tracks so that it has a nice impression of, of steel and the weight 
more lifelike. And that's a really easy job. Just kind of throw in some shims, glue it in, and it'll be all set. Um, so I'm kind of happy with that. And the tracks also, everything's really nice and straight, pretty much vertically going down. Um, very impressed. Um, didn't really do much scratch building with this. Like I said, um, I've been in a hurry. I'm working on a few models at the same time, which I think is a, a bad habit. Um, what happens is you just get crunched for time and you don't give attention that you would to each individual model. It's a habit that I need to uh, work on. Uh, I do get kind of excited like most modelers with with new kits that we acquire and um, well I just have to have a little self-control. Um, things I would do differently with this kit so far if I were to uh, spend a lot more time with it um, well, I think right now, you know, the gas cans, I actually threw these out. You know, if you, I don't know if you can see it through the camera at all, but, you know, there was only one handle, and that's not really accurate to uh, the cans. They would have three handles, as you would see, uh, even present-day cans are the same way. Uh, I did throw these out. I was going to use a set from another kit, um, but then I came to the conclu conclusion that... Um, you know, it's okay. It's uh, This has all been a fun experience. Um, this will probably never go into any kind of competition. Um, so, you know, let the, let the pressure just... You don't need it. So I grabbed, went through the trash can and, and got these back and dressed them up, took out the flash, and there they are. And I'm okay with that. The pioneering tools, um, sure. You know, they um, the detail's not so great. Um, they didn't really go on that well. Um, yeah, you know, I certainly could have gotten some aftermarket stuff to apply, but I didn't. Um, the engine compartment, <clears throat> I did not install. Oh, it's one thing I like about this kit is it's an early Tamiya kit, uh, and it comes with a lot of great detail for the time period, and I still think even today it um, it's quite a, a good kit. Um, there is no engine, as you can see. I, uh, I'm not going to have it exposed, so my philosophy, like a lot of other moto builders, if you can't see it, don't bother. Um, I can use those parts maybe to scratch build an engine for some other model in the future. Um, and actually, too, this whole system can open up as well. I glued it down. Um, so, again, for the time period, this kit is, uh pretty great and I would recommend it to a lot of people. I know there are many other manufacturers build other uh, M113s and other variants um, but for anybody new to modeling or coming back after uh, a sabbatical um, yeah it's a great build. Um, one of my other building things is I'm, you know, I'm not a I'm just a regular Joe model builder you know and um, I do want to try out some new weathering techniques, uh, dot filtering, and just working like this really nice straight surface. Uh, it's kind of great. You can do a lot of uh, nice weathering details that I do not have the skills uh, down very well. And I think building this kind of kit is great to learn new skills. Uh, it would be a real shame to be building... A really expensive kits you know a lot of these kits you know they do cost some money you know a sixty dollar kit that that's not uncommon for anything that's uh brand new or contemporary and i'd be disappointed if i were to try experimenting with new techniques and and not having them come out as well as they could be on such a fine new kit so i think building older kits is always uh, a strong card to play if um you're learning new techniques but that's my opinion, um, and that's okay, you know, there it is. Uh, the hatch, I'm going to leave open, as with all the other hatches, uh, so they'll come in something like that. Um, and I still uh, got to work on that. I'm not too sure what I want to do. I painted a, a base coat of black just to, to get some color and also to uh, darken my base color when it comes on. Um, I have been working with the hairspray technique for winter schemes, and I think um, after observing a few other model builders, builders online and through other mediums, 
the hairspray technique is really fun and you can also apply it to other situations that are not winter camouflage related such as if I were to apply my my varnish and then spray on the the base coat and then begin showing that chipping to come through because you know the troops are going to be you know walking up and down this ramp that'd be kind of a nice technique um, I may or may not use it so my next update video um, we'll find out um, you know, that's about all I have to say. Um, well, there is the uh, one feature to uh, that to me it did for this kit that I kind of like is that it has the you can have the I don't know what exactly it's called like the waiting bracket or bar, but this piece will have, <clears throat> goes on like this. And to me, it <clears throat> left uh, the builder the option to either have it in an open position or a closed position and um, I do like the open position I'm not going to use it um, maybe on a future model another kit I, I think it'd be kind of a nice diorama to show this either in the water or going into the water um, but for now this kit is going to be in the closed position oops it just fell just like so and um, that'll be about it um, Eventually the commander's cupola will be on. I haven't done much to it. Just put some black in. I gotta get some white for the inside, and I'll go in like that. I did kind of modify. I'm modifying the 50 caliber. I did put in, uh, opened up the barrel and also the cooling jacket. I took my pin vise and just opened up those holes a little bit. I am going to have to do a little scratch building to get the uh, 50 caliber handles put on um, the piece that came was just a solid triangular block and I felt that just just wasn't my taste so there it is um, and this hatch will also be open uh, but it does apply right there one of the problems I did have um, again this is my first interior uh, build is that um it's kind of like a, there's some choreography that needs to be worked out with regards to painting and interior exterior painting I wasn't too sure um, well I was this rim right here I don't know if you can see it in the video but you know the rim right there whether it should be white or should it be the exterior color unfortunately uh, my reference books are about 2,000 miles away in New England and I really again wasn't too concerned about uh, whether it's white or green so I just painted it green um, but I also put on a lot of these parts after the fact which I don't think is uh, eh, it could be a problem I don't know we'll find out once it's all done I'm probably wagering it's, it's gonna be okay um, but I certainly would have had liked to have put on these parts afterwards and then painting it um, so we'll see how it goes, and that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. Um, this, again, I don't have too many videos out. In fact, this might be my first one that I'm actually talking in. So I welcome any uh, constructive criticism. I think it's a good thing. Um, videotaping is not my strong card, so I'm sure there's a lot of things I can learn about videotaping to make um, better videos so that you guys and ladies, there are lady model builders out there, um, can enjoy the videos and learn stuff and share information. Um, oh, there is one last piece. It did not come with the horn. Um, right here you can see there's a little hole right there. Uh, that's for the horn, which in the instructions it, it does mention, but I looked through the, all the, the sprues and um, it's not there. Um, I think I'll just, you know, fill it up a little bit of putty and just call it a day. Um, I suppose I could go through my spares box. I'm sure there's a horn from some kit somewhere, but uh, it's fine with me. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, so there it is. Again, I'm Ross Goslin. I hope you enjoyed this little video, and um, hopefully you'll uh, stay tuned for my uh, finished, complete results. Thank you. Have a good day.